short video on uh, how to uh, change your brake pads on a 04 Ford F-150 four-wheel drive uh, this is my personal truck so I need to bring it in do a little bit of maintenance on it brake pads are shot um, so we're gonna change all those today and uh, I'll show you how it's done pretty simple pretty easy do it with some basic tools and a jack no big deal and we'll uh we'll get started i am gonna have to probably put the jumper box on it because i haven't uh i haven't started it in probably i don't know probably two or three months probably so it's gonna be dead. So we'll, uh, all right, so we'll go out here and we'll, uh, we'll get it jump started and then we'll, uh, get it in the garage. I may have to prop you up on one of my other cars out here to, while I jump start it. It's nice out today, beautiful. guys something real quick it's not a hundred percent but kind of use it as like a general rule if your brake fluid starts getting lower and lower your bottle here that's a good indication that your your brakes are starting to wear because as your brakes wear it pushes your calipers out further and further which uses more fluid out of here. So if this starts going down, you know, see how, see how low mine is? It's about right here. So I'll show you whenever I uh, push the brake calipers back in, it'll push all the fluid from the caliper back into this bottle and it'll fill it back up to the full line. So, that, so if, you, if you notice that your brake fluid is getting low, you don't have any leaks or anything like that, and that'll kind of give you an indication of how much wears on your brake pads in, in, in a lot of cases. Not, not always, but in a lot of cases.
this side at all. I wish my garage was about six feet wider on this side. I'm not going to lift it very high right now because <clears throat> these wheels and tires are really heavy. So. so, what I do is I just I'll get them off the ground just a little bit. And then that way, when I unbolt them, I don't have to drop them as far. Like, if I was to lift all the way up, then I'd have to carry the whole wheel off and lower it down. And these things are heavy. So, that's one thing, guys. Whenever, uh, whenever you decide to put different wheels and tires, whenever you decide to put different wheels and tires on your rig, uh, you add a lot of spinning mass if you go with a bigger wheel and tire. Unless, unless you go with, like, a... Uh, you know, a race setup or some kind of composite wheel or something like that. Um, in most cases, if you put a wider tire on there, you know, you'll see the guys put, you know, the real wide stance, have them sticking way out, you know. They'll, uh, you'll probably add anywhere from 30 to 50, 60 pounds per tire and wheel setup. So you figure you take that times four, you know, you're adding another couple hundred pounds to the rotating mass on your vehicle. And that's just more weight that your brakes have to stop. So, if, so you'll go through more brake pads if you don't upgrade your, you know, your calipers and all that. If you leave it all stock, then you're probably going to go through brake pads faster than you would with a normal stock wheel and tire. So... Which, you know, it's fine. Put, put, put the cool looking stuff on there and you just have to change your brake pads more often, that's all. With, uh, with the look sometimes co comes with the, uh, the inconvenience of more wear and tear on parts, you know, like same thing with the front end. Put big wheels and tires and stuff like that on there. You're going to wear out your ball joints. You're going to wear out your tie rod ends quicker, you know. So that's more weight that, you're st that your steering and stuff's having to turn, hitting bumps and things like that. So you just got to be mindful of that if that's what you want to do. I mean, I don't care. I like the look, so I don't care to, you know, replace the parts whenever they need replaced. But a lot of people will put stuff on there and then they're like, oh. Why is my ball, jo ball joints going out? Or why, why do I have to keep changing, you know, my uh, steering stabilizer shocks? And, well, it's because all that extra weight. So, it's not really the manufacturer or, you know, it's not really their their fault. Because they're not, they didn't design the truck to have, you know, 14-inch wide rims on it. You know, 20-inch 20 20 inch by 14s, you know. It came with... 20 by 8s or something, you know, so, but, we all like the look, so, it's worth it to me, you just have to decide if it's worth it to you. So, what I'm going to do right now is I got to pull my, uh, I got to pull my center caps off. And then we'll uh, break all these loose, and then I'll jack it up. And, uh, well, th these I won't have to jack up no more, but the backs I'll have to jack up a little further to get them to pull off. But 
So we'll do that real quick. I'll probably rotate my tires too while I have them off. On my wheels, <clears throat> my wheels, these are a uh, five millimeter Allen. Just pull my center caps off. A lot of times these caps will be held on with like three bolts. All these other ones are kind of just gummy bolts. They're really not, they don't even go through, they're just fake. But there'll be like three that actually three bolts that actually hold it on. zip off these uh, lug nuts. These wheels are, the lug nuts I think are probably three quarters. Well, they're 19, but if you use a 19 black impact socket, the wall, I'll show you right here. See the difference in the wall thickness between here and here and this regular socket between here and here with these wheels and you're, you'll run into this a lot but see how this 19 won't fit because it's too close to the wheel right here like right here i guess it does fit barely it fits on it don't fit on this one so see, you're gonna have to, I'm going to have to use a thin walled socket, which really isn't ideal because with an impact, you could break them. So I made, I mean, I'm not worried about it, of course, safety third, but that's just one thing that you'll, sometimes you'll have to, you'll have to deal with. And then of course, on these also. disaster but I gotta have this because this is this is a for my locks so this one this one's a locking one right here actually that's the wrong one so I probably have it in my glove box on the passenger side for my locks So you gotta make sure you don't forget to grab that stuff before you uh before you jack it up which i always do i always forget so then i'm always trying to scooch in here which i can't Of course. 
course, right? Since I mean this truck takes up every inch of this bay. I wish this bay was a little bit wider, but it's not, so. So this is the lock. So this will fit on here. You want to be real careful with these, like this one. Like if if that was to get rounded off inside there, you talk about a bad day. You would have a bad day. That would not be any fun at all. To, uh, get that off but we're not going to talk like that because everything's going to go perfectly smooth right perfectly smooth right yeah i'm talking to you I'm talking to you Torque your lug nuts to what they're supposed to be, you know. Usually they're like a hundred, hundred and five. Usually, usually they're not ever over like 120 or 130 is probably the highest I've seen really on lug nuts. If you torque them down to what they're supposed to be, they should come right off. tackle the fronts and then do the backs so that way <clears throat> that way all my tools are up here and all my tools will be back there so these tires and wheels are heavy 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 they're 33 by 12 and a half inches. 33 inches tall, 12 and a half inches wide, and they're on a 20 by 12 wheel, so. That don't sound good. Go see what that's about. something breaks.
frame on this truck is not great. I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to reinforce this frame. I'm gonna have to take the bed off and all that, but that was kind of my plan with this truck. I'm gonna make it into like a pre-runner. So I'm gonna cut the bed off. I'll probably cut the whole rear of the frame off and put a four link suspension on it. But I'll show you guys how rusted this thing is. It's it's not good. But ouch. See how it's rusted right here. pretty smushed that really probably just happened you know, over there see that one over there so we'll definitely say that uh we're not going to be uh, getting underneath this truck not until i fix that stuff but so Wheels and tires are off. Rotors look good. They're not not grooved or nothing. The backs, you can feel the back with your finger right here. That may have a tiny, tiny bit at the very top right here. A little bit of a groove, but the pads are pretty well gone. So what I'll do is I'll shoot some of this uh, PB blaster on these bolts because we'll have to uh we'll have to pull them on there. I need to change this. Boot is shot. The front. See that boot right there? That's not good. So I'll have to change that out. Before we'll drive. I'm gonna pull these two bolts off right here and we'll uh get the brakes on there. Two bolts are probably, uh, they might be 15s maybe. Smaller than that. 13s. 13s. So they're 13s. I hate that about this truck being rusted like that, but I mean, it is a 2004, and it's lived in Indiana its whole life, so I guess what do you expect, I guess? Grab a little bungee cord to uh, hold the caliper up after I pull it off. A lot of times you can get in here before you take the uh, caliper all the way off. Get you a big flat screwdriver.
time that your calipers are in good shape, you can just pull them toward you and push the, it'll push the, uh, the plungers back into the caliper. You can pull it toward you like that. And then now it'll loosen it up. Enough to be able to pull it off. Or, like I said, sometimes you can get a screwdriver in between here and your pad. Just pry your pad back. And it'll loosen it up. I'll show you how these look. And what you want to do is if you've never done your brakes before or on any a certain vehicle, Always do one side first, put it back together, then go to the other side. That way, when you take it apart, if you have any issues with it going back together, you don't know, you don't remember which way it went, the other side is still together. So you can go over there and reference off of it to put this side back together. So, or just take pictures with your phone. You can do that too. And I'll show you how this. So the caliper slides off, the brake pads stay in. So this piece stays on, the brake pads stay in. And these little tabs here hold the brake pads kind of together so you can put the caliper on and off. Now, not all vehicles are like that, of course. So what I'll do is I'll pull these off and then I'll be able to pop these brake pads off. pair of pliers to pull these pull these little wires off you want to keep these because I don't know if the new ones came with them or not if you can get them to come out without breaking them that's sometimes a, a whole nother issue They get brake dust in there. They don't want to come out. You'll see that one, I think, broke. But I'll show you the pads. I mean, they're not they're not completely gone, but they're pretty close. And. I've never put brakes on it since I've had it, so. So it's due. Because I've had this truck for, um, I've had this truck for, shoot, I don't even remember. Now I'm just prying this pad out from its positioning these little clips here. <clears throat> There's little clips, one on top, one on the bottom. Now I do know the set of brake pads I got came with new clips, so. So here's the outside pad. It's not completely gone, but it's pretty close to being gone too. So what I'll do is now, 
those are off. I'll get the air and blow that out, blow that all out. grab the new pads and see oh before I do that what you want to do is take the old inside pad put it inside your caliper like that what I do is I just take a big seat clamp I know it's probably not the right way to do it they have special tools that you can do it with but all that stuff's unnecessary just do one side a little bit nice and slow this has two pistons on it so I do one side and then I'll do the other side I don't know if you guys can see that really but I'll try to show you this so you set it up like this that's basically how that pad was riding in anyway in the truck. So you just slide that pad back in where it normally goes. And then since I have two pistons, I just press this one in a little bit, nice and slow. Go back over to this one. If you only have one piston, you just push it right in the center of that one. This one's a two piston caliper, so we gotta do both sides. So let's go nice and easy. As you're doing this, it's pushing fluid back through this hose back into your uh, reservoir. So just go nice and easy so you don't, you know, blow out any seals or anything. a little bit of time a little bit of a process but Kind of with the two pistons it kind of pushes as you push one in it kind of pushes the other one back out a little bit so you push one in and you go the other side and as you're pushing that one in this one come out a little bit but if you go slow it doesn't do it as bad because you're just letting the fluid come back through here this is an easier path for the fluid to come through the hose back into the reservoir than it is to push this cow that piston out <clears throat> But they're, they're hooked together inside of here, so that way they put even pressure on your brake pad. So when you push one, of course, it's going to push some of the fluid back through here and want to push that one back out. But if you go slow, then it'll kind of... It won't do it as bad. I mean, they'll still do it, but...
All I do is always push them pretty much all the way in. You don't have to crank it, you know what I mean? But whenever you start feeling it, get some good tension, then that's that's good enough. Like you want it, you want it in there far enough where the new pads have room to put the new pads on there and clear the rotor. But you don't have to like gonzo them tight on there, you know what I mean? pads and all the uh throw them on there. I have front and rear pads and you'll notice that in most cases one will be bigger like the front or the back will be bigger than the other. Sometimes they're all the same but basically see in this box in this box came the uh, all the new metal sliders and stuff so I know these are for the front because these are different than the back the backs look different so you just want to make sure you match up all your parts and see it did it did come with new uh, new metal springs so that's good so basically we'll pull all these little metal pieces. So I know this is the front set. So we'll uh, pull these metal pieces out. We just use a screwdriver. I'll show you, they just, they just pop loose this side and that side. They just come out just like that. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you remember where it was clipped and how it was on there. You don't want to put it upside down. You don't want to put it backwards, you know what I mean? So what I usually do is I pull one off, go to your kit, match it up with one that's in the kit. Make sure it looks exactly the same. See how those two are exactly the same? So then I'll take this and I'll put it right back in the spot that I just took the old one out of. So I'll clean it off. And then I'll put this right back in that same spot. That way I know that that one is right now. So I'll set the old one aside. They may be the same, but you don't know that until you pull them all off. And then if you pull them all off and you forget which one goes where, and they're not the same, or they are, you know what I mean? They're not the same, then, then you may have an issue, you know what I mean? But these all look the same, because here's the top one. And it's also the same as the bottom one was, so that's good for us. It's easier to remember. So then you just pop the new one on where the old one came out of. Make sure it's all the way up in there. All the way down in there. So then now that one's gone. So now now you take your pads In some cases, not always, but in some cases, the inside one, which was this one, sometimes they're different. Sometimes the tab may be different. Sometimes the length of the pad may be different from the inside to the outside. You just have to pay attention which side came off of where, which side was against the pistons, and which side was on the outside. Because sometimes they are different. And sometimes 
they have little metal pieces on here that pop inside of these holes to hold that caliper in. These don't have that. These just have like little tab things, but they don't really do anything. I mean, they'll hold the pad in there, I guess, somewhat, but not really. But let's see how these look pretty much identical. Like the tab's the same, the width is the same, the pad itself is the same. So when you pull your new ones out, you want to make sure that they are the same. So So see, there's the old pad. Thickness and all that. Here's the new pad. Thickness. So see, there is, there is a huge difference in how much I've used. This little groove in here is like a, keeps dust and stuff from building up. Plus it'll, uh, it relieves a little bit of heat and stuff, but. But we want to look at these and make sure they're the same. Make sure they're the same this way, lengthwise, and the tabs. See how those are the same? And the backs are the same. The groove here is the same. That's kind of, you got a shallow little cutout. The arch here is the same. You want to make sure all that stuff looks the same. And then you want to do it to your other pad. So see... What I do is always take the new ones I'll look at all of them I'll pull them all out of the box my tire bench is one to spin but I'll pull them out of my all out of the box and check them all see if any of them's any different a lot of times with the old ones to the new ones kind of hard to tell because one's wore out and one's not one's dirty one's not so if you just pull them all the new ones out and compare all the new ones with each other to see if any of them's different I and mean, they all have the same number on them so they're probably all the same so it's not going to matter which one goes on the inside which one goes on the outside because they're all the same but, so now you just go in reverse order. So we took the outside pad off last. So remember, I've seen this happen. I know it sounds crazy, but I've seen people put these on backwards where they put the metal side towards the rotor. I don't know how they do that. I don't know if they took the old ones off and it was metal because they had wore them out and they thought metal to metal. I don't know, but... The pad surface goes towards the rotor. And you'll notice, see how it has an arc? It's arced like this. And the outside's arced like this. That's how it goes on the rotor. The rotor is round. So the outside of this goes with the outside of the rotor. So don't put it like this. Because then you have the arc, you know what I mean? It may still fit. That's the crazy part. Sometimes it may still fit, but see how it's hitting there? That's not the way it goes. It goes like this so the arc here is on the outside of the rotor I know that sounds crazy for me having to say that and explain that but I've seen it I've seen it done I've seen it done wrong so basically we're gonna put this back in the opposite way we took it out so and they are sometimes a little bit harder to put back because you have now you have a thicker pad and you have new metal pieces and all of that so sometimes you just gotta and that metal piece is kind of being hindered in here that new metal piece is 
where the old one was wore out. But just take your time. Be easy with it. Don't be, you know, be forceful, but not overly forceful. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, sometimes I'll take the screwdriver and just kind of go back and forth, just walk it in there nice and easy. I'll take and I'll push it all the way up against the rotor. Take the other one, since I was the same. And it was on the inside. So we'll put it on the inside. Same thing, just take your time. Make sure it all slides in there without you bending any of the tabs. And then we'll take the new clip thing. And there's little holes at the tops of the pads. I'll show you here. See how the pad is right here at the top? There's a little hole. Well, this pin goes into that hole and it goes into the other pad on the other side with this side. So you just pull these together a little bit and you put those in there like that. So there's one at the top, one at the bottom. push them all the way in. I always make sure I have the calipers cleaned out as possible. I knock off any rust or anything that you know probably wasn't part of the casting. I get probably years of brake dust built up in there. Kind of clean up any grooves that you see, like in the in the caliper and all that. Get all that crusty stuff off, whatever you can. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, of course, but whatever you can knock off there. And then I just give it one more shot of air. Blow it off real quick, and then we'll. Uh, back on so they were pretty pretty wore out so now what I do is these sliders right here make sure these make sure they move free and then we're just going to take this and just Reverse order it right back to where it came from. So we're just going to slide 
slide it back on here. Say some loving words. Like, please go back on there where you belong. And then always put a little bit of anti-seize on the bolts. That way, the next time I go to do it, The next time I go to do it, then they'll uh, it don't take a lot either. Just bear with me. Gives me a tiny bit. The next time I go to take them off or do a brake job on this, then they won't be stuck and froze up. Just uh, tighten them up. This ratchet only torques to like maybe like 50 or 60 foot pounds, so I just give it a little tug. They don't have to be crazy, I mean, they don't have to be like muscle it, you know, but just a little tug. Just make sure they're tight. And then that's that. That's all back together. Brand new pads. And there you go. Now, if you'd have had to replace the rotor, then this metal bracket that stayed on here, we would have to take that off. And that was only, that would be these two bolts. There's two bolts back here, one here and one at the bottom. And then that plate would have came off. And then this rotor, see how it's loose? It just slides off of these studs. So while I'm here, I'm gonna throw some anti-seize on these and then this side's done. And there you go. Now you repeat the same process on the other side and then the fronts are done and then We'll move to the back so i'll go ahead and do the other side we'll put it down put the front tires back on uh, i may rotate the tires so i'll pull the backs off put them up here and then uh we'll go to the back okay so on to the back ones back rotors the outside feels pretty good this inside's not terrible Definitely, uh, brake pads are definitely gone. This one, the outside, same thing. Not that bad. The inside feels pretty bad. Can't really see it. I can feel it, but pads gone. So, we'll, uh, Start on the back. I'll kind of kind of show you what's going on as I go. This one, same thing. There's a bolt here and a bolt here. Pull them off, and the calipers come right off. Those are probably 
Should be the same size, but it's a Ford, so you know they're not going to be the same size. Absolutely not. 13s on the front. It looks like pins on the back, so we'll go get a 10 socket. I was wanting to show you guys, too, if, uh, if any of you girls are out there watching and your husband, boyfriend, whatever, you don't know what to get them for Christmas or his birthday or just to say how much you care about them. This right here is a set of all 10 millimeter sockets from impact eighth inch, swivels, deep wells, three eighths, swivels, half inch, all 10 millimeters. You can get that from Harbor Freight. This is the best thing that anybody has ever thought about. Losing all your tens, well, there they are. Every single one of them that you would need. Grab my big screwdriver again. Pull it first, kind of pull it towards me. See if I can't loosen it up like that, which I can a little bit. Loosened up enough to be able to pull it off. These clips are, it's got a weird looking clip and stuff on them, so. The actual metal clips are a little different too. how much weird weirder this brake pad is than the fronts this clip went on the top and then this holds on to the this holds on to the uh, outer part of the like that so these two little knobs right here go in these holes and this clip kind of holds it tight so when you pop them down in there it keeps it, the pad from going in and out like that and then this goes up into here 
puts pressure on it. So they're a little bit different. So that's the kind of thing you just kind of just kind of gotta watch them. There goes Yoder. Cruising on the road. Probably going to church. Time for church. Now I'm gonna take my clamp. I'm gonna push this uh, caliper back in. On this one, you gotta be a little bit more careful because on the very back there's a bolt that holds the uh, brake line to the caliper. You don't want to booger up that bolt, so you want to be real careful when you put a clamp or whatever on there. I'll show you this inside brake pad here in a minute when I get done. So I'm going to square that clamp right on the end of that bolt. And just go nice and slow, just like the front. This one could probably stand to have a new rotor put on it. <coughs> it's kind of cuffed out a little bit right here, so probably wouldn't hurt to put a new rotor on this one, but I'm not going to. need of some TLC and it goes beyond the rotor so I'm gonna have to box this frame or cut it off put a tube chassis or tube chain tube tube frame on from the cab back or something because it is not good at all I always when I say not at all I mean not at all it's not as bad as my son's truck was, but it's not far from it. I mean, when I go to get under it, if I do ever go to get under it, I'll definitely make sure this thing has those those safety uh, safety things right next to me because this truck could break in half any time probably. I mean, it's not that terrible, I guess. It's not good, I'll tell you that. Kind of looks like this brake pad. It's not good. But, you fix it and you go on. See what I was telling you about how this one is? It's got like these little prongs on the back. Those little prongs go into that piston on that on that uh, caliper and that's kind of what holds this pad in place but yes yeah, look at that pad it's actually cut into the metal pad is gone and it's into the metal so that is definitely not great and of course on the bottom there's another one of these metal clips they look pretty uh symmetrical so this way or this way if you put it on either direction it was probably okay I guess, but 
I like the weather. I like it being nice out. So take advantage of it when I can because it'll be cold before you know it. And I hate the winter time. So. Tell how much smaller, how much smaller these calipers are. Plus, they're only one piston instead of two, like the front. That's usually what happens. I mean, in most cases, most cars, your front brakes do most of the stopping for you. So they tend to put bigger front brakes on than rear brakes. Like I said that's. That's the case in most vehicles. That's why, like in the back in the day when they had drum brakes in the back, they'd have uh, drum brakes in the back and disc brakes in the front. And it was always okay because your front is what really has a lot of the stopping power. So having drums in the back really isn't that big a deal other than other than replacing them because if anybody's ever messed with drum brakes they're they're not as easy as disc brakes i mean they are but they're not there's more involved more stuff involved with them more springs and stuff like that but as long as you take your time do one side at a time, even on drum brakes, so you can refer to the one that's not taken apart when you go to put it back together, if you forget how it goes. I'm not calling this rust off air. trucks had brakes put on it before but I've never put them on there since I've owned it I mean it's only got a it's only got like 160,000 miles on it so this may have been the second brake job maybe turn on the air compressor for a minute I'm running out of air pressure so I'll let that build up and then I'll start talking again Hardware for the rear brakes. And it's just those metal slides, just new ones. They're all the same.
Now on these brake pads, it's easy because you know you need one of these with a, these on it and you know you need one of these with the clip on it. Now, these ones really don't matter much because you can put them either way. Now, the ones with the clips, if you look at them, see how they're exactly opposite? If I was to match this up the same direction, see how the clip is on this one on the top and this one's on the bottom? Because one of these is for the right hand side and one's for the left hand side. So you just gotta remember this goes at the top. So this one's gonna be for this side. And the reason why I know that is the rotor is round like this on this side and this went to the top. So it's gonna go just like this. This goes on the bottom, clips down like that, and then this pops in. So I know this one goes on this side. And then of course, both of these, I'll show you the other ones. Both of these are exactly the same. So the inside ones, it doesn't matter which side it goes on. As long as you put them in the right, you know, as long as the rotor, you're putting it, the cone shape to the outside of the rotor. But these are exactly identical. But these are different, the outside ones. Oh, we're just going to put it back in reverse order. Put the slide on the bottom. The new one. That may need a... May need a little tap. A little coaching. Because all that rust buildup and stuff on there, on that, on that slide, there's like some crusty stuff built up on there. Try and get that off as much as you can. And I suppose I could use like a a little wire wheel or a grinder or something. But Get on like this. It's not necessary. So I'll try it a couple more times and then I'll. Grab a little hammer and just tap it a little bit. Tap, just tap. Tap, tap, tap. Persuade, tap, whatever you want to call it. sliders are I'll go ahead and put the top one on then I'll show you what I'm talking about
I'll show you in just a second what I'm talking about with these. So basically, these sliders, instead of your brake pads riding on that, instead of your brake pads riding on the, uh, the cast part and getting all rough and you know rusted like that and then the brake pads not wanting to slide in and out real nice and smooth when you replace these sliders now you're creating a nice smooth surface for the brake pads to slide on you see this brake pad when it's on the inside the uh, caliper like this it sits on these just like this that's how it sits in in those slides and then it allows it to slide back and forth in and out as you press brakes and let off and it doesn't get hung up on all that junk so basically you're putting new surfaces on both sides so now it's nice and smooth nice and smooth that way your pads will nice and slide nice and smooth and you don't have to worry about all that you know it getting stuck on stuff like this over time that's why they give you these new slides like that that's why you want to make sure you put those new ones on. You don't want to skip that because then you're going to be putting on. You don't want to put old slides on because then your brake pad could hang up on them. So this can be just the opposite. We're going to stick this pad in there. Push your little fingers into the. the little fingers get pushed into the. Uh, piston into the hole of the piston and they're tight so you gotta kind of get them all started and then just kind of rock it back and forth with your hands like that to kind of get them to seat in there you heard it pop in there so now it's nice and tight up against them now this one you gotta remember which way is the top so this is the top of the caliper so this spring has to go to the top so that's how i want to put this pad on so that springs at the top and it just slides down i'll show you it slides down until those two little tabs on the pad pop into those holes and this spring holds pressure against there. So now that's in there the way it's supposed to be. So now I'll just slide it into place and then we'll, uh, hey, there's a supervisor slash guard dog. So more supervisors. So I'll button this side up and then I'll uh, show you what it looks like when it's done and then we'll move to the other side. So basically you just put the bottom in and you can just rock it forward just like you just like you pried it out. You want to do the exact opposite. You want to put your brake pads on that slider. Basically slide it right back in. So the way this slid out. The same way I slid it back in. some uh, anti-seize there and anti-seize on your studs wheel studs
and then we'll put these in there. She probably won't try to catch her hand. So you don't let her fool you. She's a guard dog. So don't you don't want to over crank these bad boys. Just snug them. Just tight and then uh, that's it. You go too much with those, you'll break them. Because they are small. I don't know why they use tens, but so there you go. So that's how it's so now you got your tabs. So that's how this outside one has like a little U. So basically this pad goes over both sides of this. Now the inside pad just has the outside tip. You want to make sure it stays on the outside. You don't want it to get back behind here because then your pad won't sit straight. So see how the top is? So basically I rocked it from out here. I rocked it forward and it hit right there and hit right there. And then I just tapped them just to make sure that they're seated up against there. That way I know that they're nice and they're not rocked like this. They're nice and straight against there. Tighten those two bolts back up, a little snug, good to go. So now we'll uh, go to the other side and we'll knock it out. And then once you get all the tires back on, one thing I forgot to mention was uh, the first time you press on the brakes, your pads and your, your calipers, the they're gonna have to push back out. So the first time you push to apply the brakes, make sure you push on the brakes, let off and push on them again a couple times until you can feel that the pedal is you know, nice and tight before you put it in gear to move it. Because if you put, throw it in gear and you go to move it, the first time you press on the brakes, you may not have any because it takes a second for the, the first couple times you pump it, it's gonna have to push that, that caliper piston back out against the rotors. So make sure you don't do that. So make sure you have a good pedal before you go to take off or, you know, reverse it out of your garage or whatever, because the first couple of times you may not have much brakes. It'll be, you know, once you pump them back up. So I right, remember when I told you guys about the brake fluid and how low it gets whenever you, uh, it's kind of a, could be a good indication that your brake pads are starting to get wore out. Remember where my level was before we started this? Now look to see where it's at. See how much more brake fluid's in here? It's right back up to the max full line. So it was all the way down here. Now that we have new brake pads on it, it all that fluid pushed back into here. Because I don't have any brake leaks, or brake fluid leaks or anything like that. So your brake fluid should never go anywhere. So if it's full here and then you notice it's low or whatever, it's a good indication that you may have, uh, you know, your brake pads are starting to get wore out. So I just wanted to show you how much brake fluid actually goes into your calipers over time of wearing your brake pads. All right, everybody. So that's pretty much how you do it. Um, I'll throw the tires back on it and it'll be done. And that's how you do a brake job on a, 2004 Ford F-150. This happens to be an FX4 model, but it's four-wheel drive, disc brakes. You know, a lot of them are probably all the pretty much the same, the F-150s and stuff. 04, you know, that, that year, that model. But if they're not, it's the same thing. Just double check every all your pads, double check how they come off. Only do one side at a time so you can refer back to the other side. And it's easy as that. So make sure to hit like and subscribe. Uh, comment if you, you know, like to see, you know, more uh, actual car repair stuff. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you guys watching and uh, we'll catch you later.